As kids, we all like to copy stuff what we see on TV. Kids are kids, of course they will do that. Some of the kids they are so into are very cool and amazing, so they would want to copy that as well. Some kids are smarter than others, but some kids are just dumb enough to follow it. Today's story, we're going to talk about a kid who was inspired by the popular Christmas movie Home Alone, and tried to put plants cut by Kevin McCorkin in that movie. But, there was one play that was, let's say, a big soccer to everyone. Join me, everyone, as we tell this tale of Home Alone. As a child born in the 80s, it was pretty hard to avoid Home Alone. I saw that movie just about every Christmas for years. Among with the sequel, I remember seeing that one in theaters. That movie really changed my life. Even at 7 years old, I wanted to make traps. I wanted to be just like Kevin. I even had a talk boy, but I was never able to pull off a successful prank. I do simple traps at fools, like a whack covering leaves or a bucket on top of the door. This stuff wasn't a wisdom. I know I was just stealing from the movie or just stuff I saw on television. I got away with a fair amount, pouring a quarter in a cupcake and making someone bite into it, but hey, they got a free quarter. My friends and I once tricked a kid into thinking a slide was broken, like it had static clean or something. We were using a rope. He couldn't see tied to the top, so he couldn't slide down. He slid down in a big puddle. Just soaked him. He had dug it deeper the day we had dug it deeper the day before. It was hilarious. None of these crates got noticed by the teachers. I just kept getting away with it. Eventually I lost interest in doing it as people stopped believing everything I said or did. So, fair enough, I stopped. Plus, I got signed to that Christmas, and that pretty much took over all my creative energy. Drawing pictures of Sonic, Tails, robots, and all that stuff. It was my world. One kid, Jacob, was still out for a chance about some trap or prank I put on him. I probably got him a lot. He kept up grabbing my drawings and crumbling them up. He just straight up threw rocks at me. Nothing he did was clever or creative. He was just a pain in the ass to everyone around him. I had to stop my tricks. One day, he tried to pick a fight with me in the bathroom when my friend Steven steps up and gets in Jacob's way. Jacob was bigger and pushed him down and had held him down on the floor and was sound lick it! And Steven was trying to break free. I got help and some sequels broke it up. Still, I was so pissed off. I knew what I wanted to do. I thought about Home Alone too, and just how haunting the scene where Marv gets socked. His bones flash on the screen. It stuck with me months after seeing the movie. I didn't know what it was as a kid, but that really said it to me. Electricity was the key. I wanted to kill Jacob. I worked on this trap for a while. I realized I could give Jacob some laxatives and give him the ones and he have to go to the bathroom and then he sit in the seat. But I waited to give to give when he sits on it so he falls in the water, which would then sock him and kill him. The breakaway toilet set was going to be easy. I wiggled it up in the handicap star right away, tested it out. I had a nice wet butt to prove it. I wrapped it back up and hoped no one knows it was broken so I could get, so I could just untape it later. I figured I could get, I could electrocute him with one of our old hair dryers. We had three in the house, a sleek looking red one, a big one my mom and sister used, and this old brown one. I grabbed the one up and smashed it. That got all the casting off of it and let me whip some parts. 
I wasn't so what was what, but I knew I needed to hide it in the bowl, so I took more off. I was there for some odd looking wires. I got myself a frog in a bucket of water. I put the wires in the bucket, and then plug it in, and then drop the frog in. Result? A dead frog. Seemed good enough to me. I wanted to wake it up, up during lunch. I came up with a plan and told Steve I was going to chick chick him to having diarrhea. He was so into it. I told him I tried to trick him into eating your lunch. Steve got it and we played some before psychotic to get take up to steal our dummy bag of lunch, and take up ate it, with laxatives and all. I went to the bathroom and set up my trap. Steve kept a look out, and we made so no one else used the handicap star. I then hid in the star next where I could plug in the pot to a, to an extension cord. I then heard the moaning and suffering from Jacob. He saw Steve, who was laughing. Steve had no idea what I had in mind. Jacob made my friend lick the floor in his bathroom. It felt so right to have him back in there. Jacob was huffing like out of my way dweeb something. He couldn't use my star and saw someone was in it and I heard him suffer over to the handicap star. I hear him panicking as he tried to take his pants off. I'm just holding these two cords hoping he doesn't notice me. I figured it was time. And so, I plug it in. Just as I do, Jacob is sitting on into the seat, and I heard a gurgled, disgusting noise of his bowels exploding whatever decaying matter that was rested in him. The gurgle was soon joined by the splash and bubbly noise of him hitting the water. There was almost immeasurable joy from Steve's mouth as he is laughing, enjoying the revenge. Hearing a bully defecate in toilet water. Truly a unique and pleasurable satisfaction. The grunts and Moy's photo didn't last as the next noise we was Taker's body hitting the ground. I unplugged the cord and quickly snuck under the star. Steve was laughing so high, I don't think he even heard a thing I was doing. I think all the pieces he took all the tape and cords and stuffed them into back my backpack. Jacob had passed out there and looked rather dead. I snuck back into the star and I just and I just wasn't l- laughing like Steve was. I opened it and smiled at him, telling Steve how good we got him. I went back out to Reese's and Steve followed me. They didn't realize Jacob was missing till lunch break was over. They took the bathrooms pretty quickly. The school wa- did a pretty good job about keeping it quiet. We all heard the ambulance run, but they turned off the lights and signed just as they got to the school. No one was alerted to the fact that there was a dead body in the bathroom. Any, see, our assembly was called for our classes grade 1 through 3. They showed us a video about pollution and how dirt and the sun made our lungs. It was just a way to get us all in one place and not see them wheel a corpse out. Caesars must have been calling parents too. They distracted us very well. The following days, we had more assemblies and talk about Jacob and not really mention how he died. It's like they didn't know how he was murdered. They must have known, right? Maybe they just had no idea who could do something like that. I kind of couldn't believe it myself. I made Jacob do a lot more than lick that floor, but... I still kind of get boops since this time of year is when the Home Alone movies come up on TV. It's hard to watch them now. That scene with Marv Skeleton, it's so much more unsettling to me now.